Hello everyone, we are here to talk about wireless LAN components. And with wireless LAN components, I've got a table full of items to bring up. To get started, let's start with the end device and the network device you're connecting to. An end device is going to have a transmitter, receiver, antenna inside of it. Here we have a laptop. And when the laptop screen is open, that antenna is right up here at the top of the laptop screen. Gives you better signal strength and connectivity. That's going to be an integrated internal antenna up there. In comparison, what if you're running a desktop computer, and maybe your desktop computer doesn't have wireless? Well, what you can do is purchase a card like this that would connect to your motherboard, and with that card, it can have an external antenna off the back of your desktop tower. This antenna is known as a dipole antenna. It's omnidirectional, but we'll get to that later on. Now, besides antennas like this that are going to be literally integrated into your motherboard by purchasing and installing, you can also purchase USB antennas. For example, there's an internal wireless antenna inside of this, and it's got a USB cable that would plug into your machine. There's also other variants where we have a USB adapter with a wireless antenna built in, and again, it's got a little dipole antenna there for omnidirectional wireless coverage. So, that's going to be our end devices that are going to interconnect with now the network devices. And with these network devices, one of the common items we'd see is the wireless router. And the wireless router here is going to provide network connectivity for those end devices as they want to communicate. Now these wireless routers commonly have three functions. Those three functions being, number one, a switch built in. For example, I've got a set of blue ports here. There are four of them. That's an integrated switch in this wireless router. You plug your wired devices into that switch. Why? Because the wireless router has another function, which is function number two, and that would be an internet port which is the function of default gateway slash router. The function means we're going to be able to send our wired network traffic and wireless traffic out to a different network or infrastructure. That could be the internet, for example, off of that internet port. The third and final function of this wireless router is we have internal integrated antennas in this wireless router, which allows us to connect our wireless end devices. There's other wireless routers that are out there too. For example, like this one, it does not have internal antennas. All the antennas are external, but same thing. Switch built in, internet port as default gateway, and wireless services provided. So as we talk about these wireless routers, what are they gonna do on the wireless side of the house for us? Well, this wireless router is going to be broadcasting what's known as a beacon. And the beacon's gonna include the SSID, which is a service set identifier. That is the name of the wireless network you want to connect to. So when you're looking on your phone or looking on your laptop and you click refresh for those wireless networks, it's going to see the SSID, which is the wireless name of the router. These wireless routers also do association and authentication. And what that means is when you refresh and receive that beacon, not only will you get the wireless name, but you're also going to see the security standards and wireless standards supported by that access point or wireless router. That allows you to associate and authenticate successfully and communicate with those wireless devices. Let's dive in a little bit deeper now. We have the wireless router covered, but what if you want to deploy many wireless devices on your network and extend wireless range? One of the first things people like to say is, go with a range extender. A range extender can only do so much regarding distance and also doesn't scale well. The other solution is to deploy a wireless access point. Looks just like a wireless router. The wireless access point has one major function, and this gives us one network port on the back. It's not running as a switch. It's not running as a default gateway. The wireless access point is going to connect to your wired infrastructure and connect wireless devices using its antennas. These are awesome. There's two classifications we want to get into. We're going to have autonomous wireless access points, where each wireless access point you deploy requires full configuration by you. Imagine having a hundred of these to provide network and wireless access across a big business. That would take a while. There's a other solution to go with besides autonomous, and that's called controller-based. With controller-based access points, they're commonly called lightweight access points. These access points, they again, have maybe one or two ports. This one has two, a primary network port and a backup in case the primary goes down. But these lightweight access points that are controller-based do not require individual configuration of each access point. You configure a wireless LAN controller, a WLC. And when you configure that controller and you plug these into the network that the controller is on, the wireless controller will configure and manage all of your lightweight access points. 
Another version, of course, is this big, beefy Cisco one right here. Same thing. Deploy 10, 20, 30, hundreds of these wireless access points. They are controller-based, which means they're all managed and configured by the wireless controller without initial configuration. Doesn't scale so well? Scales awesome. So last but not least, let's hit some antenna types. I mentioned we get to it. We have all these wireless devices, and we hit this already. These are those dipole antennas, which provide 360 degrees of coverage. They're awesome when you're talking about rooms and small areas of hallways, but they're not going to go long distance. So if you want to go long distance, what we focus on is something more akin to this. And these type of antennas are not omnidirectional. These type of antennas provide directional-based coverage. There's different versions like Yagi and Parabolic, some that look like radar dishes. They're meant to target longer range distance with wireless technology. So these are our wireless LAN components. Take your time and study and read and have some fun.